Theists, creationists, and intelligent design proponents alike, they are all alike, you know, often tout the anthropic principle, or the so-called fine-tuning argument, as evidence for God or an intelligent designer. But I'd like to suggest that modern science provides contrary evidence to this assertion. Here is how the anthropic principle is defined by those who promote it as evidence of a creator. During the last 30 years, scientists have discovered that the existence of intelligent life depends upon a delicate and complex balance of initial conditions simply given in the Big Bang itself. Since the beginning of time, all the matter in the universe has been governed by precisely balanced laws and constants. During an interview with Robin Collins, Strobel learned how these laws offer compelling evidence for a creator and conspire to make the universe habitable for life. The laws of physics are balanced on a razor's edge for life to occur. The universe is finely tuned by an intelligence to sustain complex life. An intelligence that must be beyond the constraints of time and space. The universe is precisely tweaked to support life on Earth. This is called the anthropic principle in science. That the universe is so precise just as it is, that if any li one little thing were altered, man, Anthropos, wouldn't exist. So once again, the view that Christian theists have always held, that there is a designer of the cosmos, seems to make much more sense than the atheistic view that the universe, when it popped into being, uncaused out of nothing, just happened to be, by chance, fine-tuned to an incomprehensible precision for the existence of intelligent life. Now, I know that blows your paradigm because, see, that points to design. That points to the fact that the universe was designed for us. So, while the anthropic principle basically states that certain conditions must exist in order for life to exist in our universe, it says nothing, as the theists, creationists, and intelligent design advocates like to assert, about our supposed favored place or status as a result of those conditions. In fact, many things frankly want to kill us. And that's where modern medicine steps in. Before the advent of modern medicine, human lifespans were painfully short, relatively speaking. The giant sequoias, for example, without erosion or a natural disaster like fire, could theoretically live forever. The oldest living sequoia is about 2400 years old. Human lifespans, however, until the advent of modern medicine, stopped roughly around 35 to 40 years on average. The universe doesn't particularly want us to stick around. Now granted, other life forms have much shorter lifespans, but without a lot of help, humans aren't particularly favored with longevity. Actually, technology in general is evidence against the anthropic principle being invoked as proof of a beneficent God. Without technology, human beings are confined to a limited zone of habitation on the earth. We simply cannot survive without technology in many places on the earth. For millions and millions of years, the ancestors of human beings were confined to sub-Saharan Africa. The rest of the world was simply too hostile to traverse. Granted, there were other habitable spaces for humans, portions of South America, for example, but the journey to get to these other places was lethal. The rest of the globe had conditions, granted by these same anthropic principles, which rendered them deadly to early human expansion without technology. And that says nothing about the rest of the universe. Without technology, human beings occupy but a fraction of the Earth's surface, so that argues that even the Earth, as wonderful as she is, isn't particularly predisposed for human life. Certainly it is conditioned for life in general, but that's a far cry from saying it was conditioned with us in mind. But what of the vast majority of the rest of the solar system? Or even more mind-boggling, the rest of the universe? We are but a tiny speck, even in our own system, not to mention in our own galaxy. And you don't like that because you want to believe that the Earth, like Carl, like Carl Sagan believed, is just a little blue dot somewhere off in some extraneous portion of the galaxy. It means nothing. We don't mean nothing.
blue dot somewhere off in some extraneous portion of the galaxy. And of course, our galaxy is but a crumb in the vastness of the universe. Now without technology, have a human try to exist just a few miles above sea level and see what happens. Even within the Earth's own atmosphere, conditions exist which will annihilate human life. Beyond the Earth's atmospheric barrier, human beings would suffocate, freeze, all within a fraction of a second. Visit any of the other bodies in our solar system and human beings would alternatively freeze, burn up, be crushed, or fly off into oblivion. These are the vastly normal conditions in the universe in regards to human life. Suddenly, the fine-tuning of the universe, just for us, begins to seem a bit absurd, doesn't it? They are all alike, you know. Often tout the anthropic principle as the theists, creationists, and intelligent did I, did I as the theists, creationists, and intelligent design advocates, I don't know if you heard my ankle pop or not. And, of course, our galaxy is but... Oh, crap. I had forgotten another word.